Welcome to Ancestor, the Humankind Odyssey. It's Abyss, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier, part two. Now remember to hit that like button and subscribe to help support the channel. All right, so this is part two. So if you haven't seen my part one video, I would check it out. It'll be in the description below or the pinned comment. Part one is more of a beginner's guide. Part two will be more advanced. All right, so the first thing let's talk about is analyzing clan members' bones. So after you do a generation jump, the babies will be adults, the adults will be elders, and the elders will be bones. So what you see me doing is going around and analyzing all of my elders' bones, right? This will give you free XP. So if there's any kind of skills that you were not able to reinforce you know, before you did the generation jump 15 years later, you will now have enough XP to basically unlock everything again, simply just by analyzing your clan member's bones. Okay, so once you reinforce everything again, you can do another generation jump and then analyze the bones again, lock in anything that you might not be able to unlock before and just rinse and repeat. All right, next we're going to talk about the basalt chopper or obsidian scraper. So those two are, you know, different forms of rocks. If you take two of the basalt together and smash them, you will end up creating a basalt chopper. Or you can do this with two pieces of obsidian and make it obsidian scraper, right? This tool here is probably one of the most important tools in the game. It will help you craft sharpened sticks so much faster. I think at one point at the end of the game with the chopper, it took only two hits to craft a sharpened stick from a dead branch. So if that gives you some type of an idea of how much faster it is, it is. <laughs> so besides making a chopper or scraper, once you kill an enemy, you'll be able to use that to butcher animals so that you can get the meat from them. Now my experience with the game is I end up keeping a chopper in one hand and then a sharpened stick in the other, simply because if I use the sharpened stick up by you know attacking an enemy or something, I could easily just grab a dead branch, use the chopper, make another sharpened stick within a couple seconds. So the basalt chopper and the obsidian scraper is a very important tool to have. Oh. All right, next we're gonna talk about the hard bone. So this is another weapon that you can get when you butcher an animal, depending on what their size is. So now we know how to make a chopper or scraper. After you kill an enemy, you'll be able to hover over them and then hit butcher. So once you butcher them, you'll have some meat that you can actually eat. You can train your body so that you can eat meat you know, over and over again because at first you won't be able to. But depending on what size the predator is, you'll be able to get a hard bone from it. I haven't found a really good use for it. You know, it's just another weapon that you can have. So if you just want to explore, you don't want to worry too much about any kind of enemies or anything like that. The hard bone is not a bad weapon just to bop enemies over the head with so they don't disturb you as much, you know what I mean? So it's a nice weapon to have if you don't feel like crafting a bunch of sharpened sticks. It'll easily knock some sense into some enemies and it'll leave you alone for a while. This way you can explore without having to worry too much. Just carry a hard bone with you. All right, next we're gonna talk about genetic mutations. So whenever you have a baby, you have a 50-50 chance of getting a genetic mutation. Or if you take any of your kids to visit a meteorite, they will get a genetic mutation from that. So the way the genetic mutations work is, they will start on a baby, and then you will do a generation jump, which is 15 years later, the baby will become an adult. So right now you'll see that genetic mutation is on a baby right now. It's a lighter orange that you'll see. And then the one slightly below it is the one that's on an adult. So what you need to do if you want that genetic mutation from the baby to be fully active, you'll have to do a generation jump 15 years later. The baby will now be an adult with that genetic mutation. You can do one more generation jump and then that adult will be an elder with the genetic mutation. As long as it's an adult or elder with a genetic mutation, then you will go over and do an evolution leap, right? And that will basically make those genetic mutations that are on adult or elders fully active. If there's any that are on a kid, it'll just have to wait until the next time, okay? But if you go from an elder and they have a genetic mutation and then you do another generation jump, 
you're gonna lose it and it's gonna go back into the pool so you'll eventually unlock it again. So just to remember, you need that genetic mutation to be on an adult or elder before you go and do an evolution leap. Once you do that, it'll be fully active. All right, so next we're gonna talk about meteorites and the benefits of them. So whenever you visit a meteorite with a kid, that kid is going to get a genetic mutation. Not only that, you will get an extra reinforcement points. So by visiting meteorites with six kids, all six of those kids will get a genetic mutation once you do a generation jump and they're all adults, okay? Besides that, instead of having six reinforcement points, if you visit with six kids, you'll have 12 reinforcement points. So not only will you get genetic mutation, you will also get a reinforcement points. So the way that you wanna do this is, you will carry two kids. You will have two adults follow you. Those adults will have their own two kids. So you'll basically be in a pack of three traveling to go visit those meteorites. Now certain meteorites will spawn when you discover a certain landmark. So there's not a lot of them in the game. They're all in set locations. But whenever you're going to visit a meteorite, you might wanna consider bringing some kids with you so that you can get those genetic mutations or extra reinforcement points all right so next we're going to talk about hysteria now this i can't express how important this trick is especially if you like to travel alone and you're you know out about an hour away from your settlement basically at the bottom left corner of the screen you have a white bar if you're going to be dodging enemies left and right that white bar will start to disappear slowly and a red bar will slowly start to appear and fill up once that red bar goes all the way full then you will go into hysteria and teleport automatically back to your settlement so let's just say you're traveling out you know maybe an hour away in one direction away from your settlement and you don't want to go all the way back you can just use hysteria and just fast travel automatically back to your settlement. I've completed the game and I didn't see any kind of effects from it. So definitely use it as much as you want. All right, so I want to show you this map that I got off of Reddit. I will have a link for this in the description below or the pinned comment. But someone was able to put together a map and I can't tell you how useful and helpful this was especially when you figure out where these landmarks are and whereabouts you are in the game is very helpful especially for the next subject we're going to talk about is moving settlements so you can kind of plan ahead or try to figure out exactly where this location is compared to that or how far you want to go into the game next we're going to talk about moving settlements now for this you probably want to plan ahead and go out on your own and set up defenses and stuff like that so Whatever place that you find and you like, just have it set up and ready to go. Make sure there's at least a water source and there's a bunch of food around the area so that you won't have any issues like that. But all you really have to do is make a bed and then there's a circle button that you'll hold down to settle. But don't do that by yourself. Make sure that you have everyone with you. So now that you have the map that I just shown you, you can easily plan ahead and figure out exactly where you would like to move your settlement. So one thing I will tell you though, is your clan members, when you're you know, going to your new settlement, will definitely get injured either by you know, one of those saber tooth tigers attacking them. I think about three of my members end up bleeding, right? So once you get to the new settlement, you'll have to patch them up. But most of the time, they'll be very weak in their energy They'll just have none at all. And the way to get around that is by doing a generation jump 15 years later. So once you get to your settlement, just do a generation jump and then 15 years later, everyone will be fresh and brand new. Just before you do that, make sure you have defenses set up completely. Make sure this is the place that you're going to want to have. And all you have to do is when you get there, make it bed, hold down the circle button and settle and that'll be your new home. At first, you might not really need to do this because every time you do an evolution leap, it's always gonna move your settlement. But eventually when you get late into the game, it's just gonna bounce you around old places that you've already been to. And if you wanna start moving more out east, then you're definitely gonna to need to move your settlement. All right, next we're gonna talk about attacking and dodging. 
So the primary button that you're going to hit for the PlayStation is the X button and the primary button for the Xbox is the A. There is two important sound cues that you need to listen to. So for the first sound cue, you're going to hold down the X button and then afterwards, you're going to move the left stick in the direction you want to go. Left, right, back to dodge or forward towards the enemy to attack. Once you hear the second sound cue, then you're going to release the X button. Okay, so again, when you approach an enemy, you're going to hear the first sound cue. You're going to hold the X button down, move the left stick in the direction you want to go, and then you're going to hear the second sound cue and release the button. If you go forward with the left stick, you're going to attack. If you go left, right, you're going to dodge. So I want you to hear the sound cues real quick because that is the most important part. So again, when you hear that first sound cue is when you're going to hold down the X button. In between that time of the first and second sound cue, you're going to move the left stick to the left, right, back to dodge, forward to attack. And then when you hear that second sound cue, you're going to release the X button. Doing that will allow you to dodge and attack enemies. All right, there you have it. Those are the tips and tricks that I wish I knew earlier, part two. I will have a link to that map in the description below or the pinned comment. Also, if you have not seen my part one video, I highly recommend doing so. I'll have a link for that at the end of the video. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel, and I will see you next time.